Hi everybody, my name is Mr Barlow and welcome to episode 11 of the VCE Biology Podcast. This episode covers part of Unit 1, Area of Study 2, and I'll be talking about asexual and sexual reproduction, meiosis, and aspects of human reproduction. So in episode 1 to 10 of the podcast, we've talked about living things, we've talked all about them, we've talked about what they're made of, how they function, how they grow. It's all been very interesting, but what happens if you need more living things? Well, that's where reproduction comes in. And there's two types of reproduction. There's asexual reproduction, which is when you don't need a partner, and there's sexual reproduction, which is when you do need a partner. <laughs> so the first thing I want to talk about is asexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction is basically when one organism makes a whole new organism just by itself, all by itself. And that new organism is a perfect copy or a clone of the first organism. And there's several different types of asexual reproduction. There's binary fission, and that's basically where a single-celled organism splits into two. And then you've got two organisms. So this is, you know, bacteria do this and their one single circular chromosome replicates and then they split down the middle and then there's two bacteria and they're both exactly the same. So another type of asexual reproduction is budding and this is uh, very similar to um, binary fission but instead of the cytoplasm splitting equally one of the organisms will end up with a slightly smaller cytoplasm um, but it is very similar. A difference is that budding can also actually occur in small multicellular organisms uh, such as a thing called a hydra. Another type of asexual reproduction is fragmentation. So this is a bit like fission but it happens in multicellular organisms exclusively. So for example a worm, if a worm gets really really long some types of worms will end up splitting in the middle and then two whole new worms will have formed from that one single worm. Uh, so another example, some species of sea star can also reproduce, reproduce asexually by fragmentation. So a part of you know one of their arms comes off and then it eventually develops into an entire new independent individual sea star. So there's also spore formation and that happens in fungi and some fungi will kind of shoot these spores off into the air and if a spore lands in a good environment, then that spore will start growing and form a whole new fungus. But again, it will be a clone of the original fungus, therefore making it asexual reproduction. And another type of asexual, asexual reproduction is vegetative reproduction. And that's basically where plants make whole new plants exactly the same as them. And a good example of this is sometimes plants will send out a root uh, kind of along the ground or just underneath the surface of the ground and that root will send out another shoot upwards and then that single shoot will end up developing into another whole tree. So it started off as just another root from one tree but then a whole new separate tree ends up forming from it. So that's vegetative reproduction. And the last type of asexual reproduction is parthenogenesis and that's basically virgin birth, no sex re required. So what happens is an organism like a lizard or an insect will give birth to a whole new organism, but it will be an exact clone of themselves. So for example, a female lizard, two of her eggs will fuse together inside of her, and then those two eggs will go on to form a whole new organism, and she'll obviously then give birth to it, but it'll actually be a clone of that original lizard. So that's parthenogenesis and the last example of asexual reproduction. Now, asexual reproduction is fantastic. The organism doesn't need to expend a whole lot of energy going out and finding a mate. It doesn't need to expend energy attracting a mate. It doesn't need to expend energy in forming sex cells so that you know the sex cells can fuse and make a whole new organism, as happens in sexual reproduction. And asexual reproduction happens anytime you want it to, really. Anytime you want it, you just asexually reproduce and bang, there's a whole new organism. It's great, really. So, why on earth would any organism go to all of that hassle to reproduce sexually? Well, the answer to that question is basically genetic diversity. So, if an organism reproduces asexually, then 
all of those organisms are going to be cloned. They're all going to be exactly the same as each other. And if there's a slight change in the environment, so that that organism is not as well suited to the environment, it might die off, and then all its clones might die off, and in fact the whole species might die off. But in sexual reproduction, sexual reproduction introduces variation into the population. So, you know, you're a bit of your mum and a bit of your dad, but you're not the same as your mum or the same as your dad. So in this case, if the environment changes a little bit, maybe only a few of the organisms in the species might die off. But the species as a whole will survive and live another day. And that's obviously really important for the survival of any species. So sexual reproduction introduces genetic um, variation into a population. And for sexual reproduction to take place, organisms need to make sex cells. So you need you know, a sex cell from a male to join with a sex cell from a female. Those two sex cells fuse and they make a whole new organism. Now sex cells are formed by the process of meiosis. So the process of meiosis shares some similarities with the process of mitosis. So to go over the process of mitosis, basically you have a cell and its DNA duplicates once and then the cell divides once so you end up with two cells which are identical to the first cell. But in meiosis, the DNA also duplicates once, but then the cell actually divides twice. So it divides first into two cells, and then those two cells divide into four cells. So you end up with four cells, and each of those four daughter cells end up with half of the DNA of the first cell. Now the cells formed from meiosis are called haploid cells, and that's because they've only got half of the regular amount of DNA, or one set of chromosomes. So regular mammalian body cells are called uh, diploid cells, so they've got two sets of chromosomes, but gametes, or sex cells, they've only got one set of chromosomes, and yeah, they're called haploid cells. So sex cells have only got half the number of chromosomes, or, or half of a full set, because if one male sex cell fuses with, with one female sex cell, and they've both got half a diploid, or half the right amount of DNA, once they've fused and they do form a diploid cell, that normal cell will have the whole set of DNA or two sets of chromosomes. Now the process of meiosis can be split up into two parts or two different divisions. Now the first division starts with prophase one and in that the um, chromosomes condense so you can see them and they look like kind of funny X shaped things and each chromosome is made up of two chromatids. And there's actually pairs, so there's, there's two um, homologous chromosomes or two pairs of big X shapes that are basically exactly the same shape. So after prophase one, metaphase one occurs and those pairs of chromosomes align along the center of the cell. After that, anaphase one occurs and the chromosomes, the, the pairs of chromosomes move to separate ends of the cell. So a chromosome is still um, whole, but its pair moves to the other side of the cell. So, so the homologous chromosomes split, and then telophase one happens, and then the, the cell pinches into two, and you end up with two new daughter cells, um, each with one set of chromosomes in them. And then, the second division of meiosis occurs. So this is where those two cells divide again into four. So in the second division, prophase two occurs. So the DNA doesn't replicate again. After prophase two, you've got metaphase two and the chromosomes align along uh, the middle of the cell again. And then you've got anaphase two. And in, in this instance, those big, the chromosomes basically split into their their sister chromatids. So those big X-shaped chromosomes actually split into two and those two, the two that have split, migrate separately to each end of the cell. And then you get telophase two. So those two cells split into four total and they're haploid daughter cells because you had two pairs of chromosomes which split, um, but then they split again so that you ended up with four cells which have got half the amount of DNA in them. So that's very quickly the process of meiosis. It's got um, 
basically two divisions, a first division and a second division, and you end up with four haploid uh, daughter cells or gametes. So meiosis happens in a great uh, many organisms. And if we look at uh, mammalian reproduction, gamete formation or meiosis is the first step. So the male sex cell, the sperm, is produced in the primary sex organ of the male reproductive system, which is the testes. And the female sex cell, or the egg, is produced in the primary sex organ of the female reproductive system, which is the ovaries. So the next step after gametes are formed is sex has to happen. And in sex, the sperm fuses with the egg, and that's fertilization. And what happens then is once the uh, egg is fertilized with the sperm, new cells start to form via mitosis. So that's just regular cell replication. And after you've, you've got a few cells, so you know, one cell becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight, eight becomes 16, 16, 16 becomes 32. Um, then that fertilized cell is known as a blastocyst, so a little ball of cells. And it then adheres to the uterus of the female and then a body plan starts to form. So basically you get three different or three separate types of tissue starting to form. So you get ectoderm, which basically ends up being the outside or the skin part of the organism. You end up with a mesoderm, which ends up being the middle part of an organism, which is basically your, all the stuff in the middle, your organs and your muscles and things like that. Uh, but you also end up with an endoderm so that's the third type of tissue and that's the inside part uh, so ecto is outside meso is you know middle and uh, endo is inside so the endoderm actually ends up basically being your gut so it's a ginormous tube that goes from your mouth to your anus and everything else in the middle and then after those three uh, different types of tissues start to form further development takes place in the uterus and that means your arms and legs form, your brain forms, uh, bodily organs form, your hair forms, uh, everything else forms. And that obviously ends up leading up to birth. So all aspects of uh, human reproduction are controlled by a variety of hormones. And birth and lactation are no different. For example, there's a hormone called oxytocin. And it basically initiates the birth process. So it initiates um, contractions in the uterus, which ends up forcing the baby out. And then another hormone called prolactin stimulates the production of milk. So overall, um, reproduction starts with meiosis. So you've got two gametes. Male and female have sex. Then a new organism is formed, which grows and develops in the uterus. Then birth occurs. And then the new organism grows and develops outside of the uterus. Um, and it does so by, in mammals by breastfeeding um, from its mother. Then it grows into an adult, and then in fact the whole thing starts again. And that's basically reproduction in humans. So the last thing I want to talk about in this episode is sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So basically flowers are the sex organs of plants. And they've actually got the male and the female parts in the one flower. So the male part of the flower is the stamen. And it's made up of several long things called filaments. And on top of the filaments are the anthers. And anthers produce male pollen grains. So, you know, the male sex cell. The female um, part of the flower is called the carpal. And that's made up of several things. Uh, the first thing is called the stigma. And the stigma sits on top of a long style, uh, kind of right in the middle of the flower. And that leads down to the ovule, and that's basically where the egg is. So that's basically the ovary of a plant. So what happens is, the male pollen grains fertilize the egg uh, in the ovule of a flower. And this can happen by, you know, bees um, can go from one flower to the next and carry the pollen. Or some flowers are, are wind pollinated too. So after fertilization, the ovule becomes a seed and then the ovary becomes fruit. So when a flower is fertilized, um, it, it turns into a piece of fruit. So next time you're eating a piece of fruit, just think you're eating the ovary of a tree. That's, that's nice, isn't it? And, and then of course the fruit hits the ground 
and then when the conditions are right, the seed will germinate, and that seed will then grow into a whole new plant. So that's um, sexual reproduction in flowering plants. And that brings episode 11 of the VCE Biology Podcast to a close. I'm Mr. Barlow, and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.